Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. So today I'm doing something just a little bit different. I haven't done a thing yet, except get stuff ready. Um, I want to talk about how to go from your art journal to a larger piece, something you would hang on the wall. This is a question that I get asked a lot. And it has been a question within the membership as well. And I was going to do a video for the members and I thought, you know, I think this would be great for everyone because I have some really valuable tools and things to think about if you decide that you have created a journal page that you absolutely love and you want to um, translate that into a bigger piece. So I want to walk you through a few things and today's going to be full, basically full tutorial. I will explain some things at the beginning and then I will do a voiceover and I will walk you through all of my process uh, so that you know, you know, kind of what I'm thinking and that kind of thing. I hope this will be beneficial to you and it will be interesting to you. So journal from journal to canvas and I I absolutely loved my journal page that I did last week when I, I just was so tired and I needed rest and I just came in here and just got it all out. I loved that. And we're gonna talk through some of that and the whys and the hows of taking that and making it bigger. Before I do that, I want to let you know that Adventure Walk is still on early bird pricing. It is We do three gorgeous, in-depth, detailed abstract landscapes. This is one of my most detailed workshops that I've done. I show you step by step on how to get the layers and the key things that make a beautiful abstract landscape. And I give you a lot of freedom and style options and that kind of thing. So if you're interested, you have, when you see this video, you'll have one week left for the early bird pricing. Okay, the supplies that I use will be listed on the blog. I'm also gonna put this video in the subscriber library with the supplies and everything as well. It'll also be in the mem membership too for the members. But it'll the supplies link will be down below this video in the YouTube description box. I'll also have a link to the subscriber library. If you're not a, a subscriber library member, you can sign up for it. It's free, it has all kinds of resources in there. And then, what else was I gonna tell you? <laughs> I'm just trying to remember. The stencils that I use today in my large piece will be on sale this week. Okay, uh, I think that's it. So let's let's take a look. So here's my journal page from last week. And I absolutely love it. I love, love, love it. I now, as I was doing this, I was like, I really would love to see this in a bigger piece. And that's what our journals are for. I want to really emphasize that because the I have two questions that are asked me. Um, why would why would I create in a journal? And then why would I create large? So why I create in my journal? Because some people just paint big paintings or larger paintings or on canvas and that kind of thing. Because they feel like if they create something on the, in their journal, then you know how do you how do you, and you love it, how do you make it into an actual piece? And then some are, all they do is create in journals, and that fear of stepping over into a bigger piece um, can be very real. So I want to convey that for me, my journal is this place of discovery. It always is, it always has been, and over the last two years, it has really become a place of freedom to where I don't have finished pages every single time. I have experiments. And all of, like this went to a bigger canvas. Uh, let's see, this went to a bigger canvas. This was a background. These were all playtime. This is a was ideas for landscapes. It's all, my journal is so, such a personal journey that, and I have, I have probably seven different journals going at the same time. 
and it's all about my discovery. And so this page, it's beautiful and it's finished, but it was about discovery. I did some things that I haven't done in quite a while in here, and I combined a couple of things, and I now have, have this information to take it to a larger canvas or larger uh, wood panel. Now, you don't have to feel this. I, I think a lot of people feel a pressure that I need to do something more outside of my journal. You don't. This, If this is what makes you happy, then do it. And, and don't feel pressured to make something more of it. Just do what brings you joy in your journal. And, and let it be that. But if you're here and you're like, man, I would really like to see that on my wall, or I really would like to try to go bigger, or I'd like to make, I'd like, this would be great for my friend. I'd like to make her something, all those kinds of things. And you want to take that risk of going bigger. I have some ideas for you to help you do that. So here's my journal page, and I've got notes here so that I, I cover everything. Um, so here's my journal page, and one of the, these next tips are going to help you take this idea to a larger piece. Now, I have out here, this is this size here, I'm going to zoom out, I'll zoom back in. This size here is a, a 16 by 20 wood panel and I'm creating on wood because of what I'm going to be doing and we're going to be talking about that. This is a 24 by 24. This is really big. This could be extremely intimidating if you've never painted this big before so don't do it. Ease your way up. Get even this one. Even this one could be extremely uh, intimidating. A, a, 16 by 20. If that's intimidating to you, go to go to a, a smaller size. No, this has got stuff on it, but go to a smaller size and try it. Start there. Start where you feel a little more comfortable. However, going from your journal to a larger piece does take some courage. And you have to be brave. You can be brave and afraid at the same time. And so let's see. I'm going to put that down there. I'm going to zoom back in. Okay. Okay. So to help you take this idea to a bigger piece, here are some key things that you can do. Take a photo of it with your phone and your phone settings, most phones have a grid on it. Put Lay that grid over the top of that photo and it's going to help you see certain sections. You can do that. Um, you can also, this is what I like to do. So these are just strips of paper. Oops, I need to go this way. So I'm going to divide this into fours. I'm going to treat this as one piece. And I'm going to divide this into fours. These are just cut pieces of paper, even fours, like this. Close enough. And I'm going to take a photo of that on my phone. Or I could leave it out. It's up to you. But when I'm taking this idea, if I want to take this and make it as close as possible to this thing right here, I can then look at the sections and, and then look at my larger piece and say, okay, I know this needs to be up in this right quadrant. And you divide your larger piece the same way.
okay? So I have divided my larger piece just like I have divided my journal page. And so then when I start to build these layers and the key things that really make this page stand out or that I really, really love, I know that, okay, so my butterfly is gonna have to go right in this section, right? So that's with that line right there, kind of right here. And the numbers up here and more papers right here. So it's gonna help you space things out to get something similar to what you have on your journal page, okay? Uh, the other thing that you can do too is, take these off, maybe you're not in love with absolutely everything on your journal page, but there's a section that you just absolutely love. Grab yourself, this, this is just watercolor paper that I have cut two L's. L and L. <laughs> and um, I will take this on my journal pages and I'll move it around. And sometimes when we narrow in on something, we can really focus on, wow, that's fantastic. Or maybe I don't need all of that up there. Maybe I want more, just a tiny bit of the butterfly. Or maybe I don't want the butterfly at all. Maybe I just want it to be really abstract with those dots. So I want to move it around. And so maybe it's not this whole section right here. Maybe it's just this section. And we and I can zoom out or zoom in. And then you can divide this section up and, and make it an actual piece. So this is a great way to take a look at anything, any journal page. Because when I was... <clears throat> Doing this, I, I looked at this piece to maybe possibly make a bigger piece. Like, do I want just this? Do I want the steps? Do I want... So these, this is a great tool to take a look at areas of your work in sections. So like just that would be a great piece. And then I can kind of take this and translate it to something larger. Okay, so <clears throat> those are some tools to kind of help you get this idea to here in the, somewhat of the same fashion. Now, the other thing that you want to think about is the substrate that you're creating on. So for my journal page, I have a really solid surface. I did a lot of brayering. I did a lot of collage. I did a lot of different things on here. And I built those layers up. If I tried to do the brayering on a canvas, while I could, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get the same results because you've got that stretcher bar that's all the way around a canvas. I can't brayer over that without leaving marks. So that's why I chose wood. So you wanna think about the substrate that you're going to take your idea to and have it be similar to your journal page. Now, if your journal page, if you're not worried about brayering or anything like that, then a canvas could work, but you have to think about the steps that went into your project as you transfer it to a bigger piece. Now, speaking of that, think, speaking about the steps that went into your piece, you'll want to take note of what you did. So these are my notes of this journal page. And I kind of replayed in my head, you know, because sometimes you have to sit down and think about, okay, what did I actually do first? And I did my writing first, and then um, I didn't have any color on that, and then I stenciled in black. And then I used some burnt sienna with some gesso and some messy paint, and then I started the brayer process. So I wrote all of those things down so that I know the steps that I'm going to take as I take this to this big canvas. Okay, now the next thing that you're wanting, you'll want to think about as you decide to go bigger is your supplies. You're gonna need more paint. You're going to need more matte medium. You're going to need more soft pastels or neo color crayons. I mean, you're gonna use more. 
So you want to make sure before you start this process that you have though you have enough because there's nothing worse than getting started and going, "Ah, oh, I don't have enough." You just took that brave step of going big and now you don't have the things and it's going to stop your um, courage. It's going to stop your mojo, your flow. So make sure that you've got the things that you need to have. The other thing is your things are going to get bigger. So for instance, I have this butterfly here, but now I have bigger butterflies. If I choose to put butterflies in my piece, I have bigger examples of butterflies to maybe do some tracing. My numbers are bigger. I mean, I even went really big. My numbers are bigger. My collage papers are bigger. So for this one, I used my basket of little bits. This basket of like scraps, that's what I used. For my big piece, my papers are bigger. I'll have bigger, so I have bigger um, strips of paper to go on here. So I have, I have my papers out and ready to go, and they are all bigger, bigger pieces, including, including my vintage papers and different things like that. So your, your tools that you use are going to change. So for instance, I'm using a bigger brayer. I have bigger brushes. This is a two inch. I have a bigger palette knife if I choose to use that to get some uh, paint down. Now my neocolors and my pastels and my pencils, they're the same, but I have plenty of them. I have, like I don't have just a little nub of something. I have a lot of my other supplies. I have plenty of matte medium to put papers down. I have all of that. So you have to, you know, just double check your supplies to make sure that you are prepared so that when you make the leap, you can go for it 100%. Okay, now let me look back on my list. Okay, so, the other thing that I want you to know is that taking something from your journal and putting it on a larger piece, you will never, I, and I'll, I'll say I have never, I have never gotten it exactly the same. It's just the nature of how art works. It's the nature of us being creatives and, you know, maybe we do the steps in a different way or the paint goes on differently or whatever. We might even change our mind in the process of our, our, you know, putting things down when we see something else that we respond to. So I have never been able to take something that I have done that I absolutely love in my journal and make it look exactly the same. I just haven't been able to do that. But I don't want it to. I want there to be that freedom of expression and that that chance for me to respond to what's happening right in front of me. And that's what our journals are for. Our journals are, I have so many ideas for what has happened in this, in this journal page that I can take it to 20 new pieces. That's what our journals are for. That's what my journal is for. Now, if you are not wanting to go bigger, stick with your journal and just explore. Take the things that you loved about this page and do another page. Do something slightly different. Do use a different tool, but kind of in the same way. Allow the journal page, whether you go big or you do more journal pages, to inspire you for further curiosity and for new ideas. So please keep in mind that as you take this step to go bigger, or to experiment more in your journal, that making it look exactly the same is not easy, and I don't want it to look exactly the same. Take some time to respond to what's in front of you, and um, use the steps that you've written out, but then also 
be in the moment and see what comes next for you because you may have a breakthrough. You may discover a new color combination that kind of gets mixed together. So those are the things that I do to take my ideas from my journal pages to a larger piece. Now I am going to work on a 24 by 24. I'm, the camera is going to be zoomed out quite a bit. I'll have some side cameras so you can see a little bit more. And I'm just, I'm going to do a voiceover for that so that I can kind of work through it silently and respond to what's happening. And then I'll come back and with the voiceover and explain what I'm doing. And so you'll be able to see it here. You'll be able to see it in the subscriber library and you'll be able to see it in the membership. And I hope that it serves you and that it answers your questions and that it gives you courage to do something bigger if you want to. Maybe go to a bigger journal if, if you're afraid of creating on something bigger. And sometimes you just have to go for it. It can feel scary, but it's also worth the try because what you discover in the process will be amazing. Whether you take it big or just to another journal page or a bigger journal, because my journal's really big. Open wide, it's 11 by 17. You may be working on a smaller journal and maybe you think, I'm gonna try to go bigger in a bigger journal. Go for it. What's the worst can, that can happen? You paint over it because you don't like it. That's it. Same with the same thing with my big piece. If I don't, I have, I have 20 pieces sitting behind me that they didn't go the way that I thought. And I pull a few of them out and I paint over them and I make something new. It's not, it's, it, it's scary, but it's worth the try. And we have to say, what if, and why not? and I can just paint over it. It's all okay. Okay, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and prepped and then we'll come back and I'll start create, taking my information that I've taken already from my journal page and start creating this big one. All right, my loves, I hope your Sunday is restful and peaceful. I hope you enjoy this process and I hope that you always, always know that you are loved. Okay, loves, so I am beginning my large piece in the pretty much the same way as I started my journal page. I do have it sectioned out in my quadrants so that I have an idea of, I can look back at my original project and kind of get an idea, okay, I've got color here or color here or, you know, that kind of thing. I'm also just kind of trying to be free with it as well so that I can, like I've said before, respond to what's in front of me. But you can see I've got my notes out on my table um, as I went back and looked at my my project and how I put it together. I'm kind of go I'm doing the same steps, not exactly the same. And I don't want it to be exactly the same. I want it to be similar and I want to recreate the things that I loved about the piece, which is the pattern that was created with the brayering. And so here I'm just wiping back in my in my stenciling which I didn't do in my journal page which I thought would be interesting and add some texture I'm also adding some white in there so I'm doing some whites and some blacks in, through my stencil um, and I know these are the beginning layers so I'm not too concerned about how it's going to look all of this will will get covered up for the most part and then I um, on my list was I dripped um, on one side and then on another side with some raw umber and that first mixture was burnt sienna and gesso and then this is raw umber and I went back over part of parts of that those drips and things um, in the in my journal page with my brayer just kind of getting that I, I loved the look of the brayering and the that roughness that it brought to my page and now I'm coming back and putting some um, papers down which is the the same format as my journal page and my pieces are much bigger bigger color choices or bolder color choices I should say um, 
they're not exactly the same as what I had, but similar. And then I've got, um, I'm bringing in the green. And so it's hard to sometimes recreate those layers because there's so many layers that are on that journal page. But as I can peek through, I see greens and different things like that. So I'm bringing in some of those colors and I also use some stenciling, you know, in the in the different layers. And so I'm doing my best guess to gather how I put the layers together. And just wanting to continue to bring that textural layering with my brayer. This color is olive green and I did add a tiny bit of kind of a teal to it to, to give it just a little bit of variation. And I, I do a lot of picking up with the paper and that it, it softens it and it, it, it kind of gives you the same look as the brayer. Here's my Neo Color crayons in my magenta bringing that that aspect of my journal page into this piece. I'm using water and matte medium to activate that neo color to give me some of that wonderful magenta that I see in my journal page. And I often get asked why add all these layers if they're just going to get covered up, but it's the layers that make this um, deep and rich and interesting and you have to continue to layer to get that look otherwise it would feel really flat so I've got my brayer and some unbleached titanium and gesso out now and what I do is that and I did this in my journal page I go back and forth from bringing in the color and the depth and the richness and then bringing in the white so you add and you subtract you have a, a loud conversation and a quiet conversation in your piece. The loud is the color and the pattern, and then you soften it and you kind of get a different view of things with the with a lighter color. And then you bring back the color again, layer after layer until you find, ah, you like, you could look at this layer and say, this is perfect for me. It wasn't perfect for me. It didn't have those rich, deep um, textures and all of the other color. It didn't have enough raw umber for me. So you get to decide when the layering process starts. But the paper, the texture, the brush strokes, um, the brayer marks, all of that adds to the richness and depth of your project, whether it's a journal page or a large canvas. Coming back in now and adding some raw umber. So I'm doing this dance back and forth where I add some and I take some away. And I need that contrast from the whites and the darks to add depth. And when I say lights and darks, lights and darks can be color too, not just white and black or raw umber. When I bring in a strong, bold red or magenta or green, that also changes the look and feel with the, you know, because it's a different value of, of, you know, the bright white. And I'm taking a look now as I move around my piece and I'm, lo I'm looking at my journal page at this point and seeing, okay, there's this sienna color down here in this quadrant because I've, I've got my journal page out with my grid on it and I see just a speck of a color in a certain area and I, I go, I tell myself, okay, I need to add that color there because I know it's going to get covered up. And I continue to look back at my project that has been divided into its quadrants. Same like with the paper that I'm adding right now. I looked back at my journal page and I'm like, okay, this need, the, I need something here. And then there'll come a point as I'm in my project, you know, kind of later on down through the layers 
where I stop looking at my journal page and I just work with what's in front of me and finish it um, in real time without looking at my journal. Bringing in some teal now on top of those papers that I just put down with some fluid matte medium. Got some prism violet, it's either prism violet or deep violet. Or I think it's actually a combination of both. And doing that pressed paper technique softens that layer. I still get that brayer feel but it softens it just a tiny bit. And these are just an old phone book pages I, that I tore out. They're the best for lifting off paper or lifting off paint. And I want to just kind of integrate all of the layers of the paper together. So I'll go over and maybe not fully over an area but I want to um, integrate them into the project. Adding more pattern. And this is kind of where I start to feel my own vibe for what's happening. So this wasn't in my notes. And I, I just went with what felt right at this moment. And that, this pattern is amazing. I'm pulling back some of that color now. So I do a little bit of reverse stenciling and regular stenciling. And I'm just adding pops of color where I feel like it needs to kind of balance out. So I've got some magenta or prism violet up at the top, on the side, towards the bottom, to keep it um, visually interesting and move the eye around the piece. This is one of the steps in my note taking was these black mark making um, bits. I did it a little bit different. I did a little heavier than what I did on my journal page only because I, I'm working bigger so it wouldn't have it didn't feel like it would overwhelm the piece. And when we, when we add light, well, usually when I add light, I add dark um, to balance out the piece. And we need, you need that contrast to make something interesting. And when you look at the journal page, there's a, at the very end um, of my journal page, there's, I add a lot of light to kind of <clears throat> make room for the butterflies and different things like that. So you need light as well as dark, as well as color to um, have some space and some rest for some visual interest.
I'm just subtly trying to add that light and make sure that it's not that it's moving around the the piece that I don't have just these random blocks and so I'm working hard to add that light to it because it needs that it needs that rest the resting space for the eye and yet make it soft enough enough that the layers underneath still show which is the layers are so interesting so I'm doing I'm using a dry dry brush and I'm just you know wiping that across the top Adding my last little bits of paper. And now I'll work on integrating those in. So you'll notice <clears throat> when you're working big, well, when you're working in any way, whether it's in your journal or not, that at first your your movements feel bold, you maybe your brush strokes feel wilder, or you have more paint. The closer you get to finishing, things become a little bit more careful. You have less paint you're a little bit more careful about where things are going. At least that's how it works for me because I'm now standing back and taking a look at the whole thing and saying, okay, I need this color here or this color here. And part of, you know, that happens, especially like what I'm working on right now with the butterfly. I want the, that area to be the focal point. I want the eye to go right there. And the only way to do that is to make it dramatic. Bring that black in. Have it start from the top and kind of go almost all the way down to the bottom. Really make it stand out. And when I decided that that's what I wanted, was that to be the focal point, I really toned down the other area. Like in my journal page, I had those, I had the butterflies on one side and on the other. And I opted not to put the butterflies on the other you know down at the bottom because I wanted that green butterfly that number three that four five six to really be the star and I realized that the green butterfly was too muted for it to be the star of the show so I added a second butterfly in that that cream color to really bring that area out and the other way that I'm bringing that area out is bringing that look so I'm bringing that dark the black and I'm bringing the white kind of leading up to and around my focal point. And so I want the eye to know that that area right there is my focal point. So I need to make it have high contrast. And I do that with lights and darks and shading.
I'm adding some marks with my pencil, added some marks, some white dots to, again, kind of keep the eye moving around the piece. That area over there was really dark. And I was kind of looking at my journal page too. I had those white dots that I really loved. And so I decided to do it a little bit different. So now I'm coming into my focal point area and I'm shading. I'm really getting some shading happening here and will really beef up that that um, area with some black to really draw the eye right there. And I'm using a Stabilo All Pencil and I'm using just some watered down black paint to bring in that black. And you see that black, how dramatic that is and how it really brings your eye right to our butterflies. I'm shading the edges of my piece and that is it for how to go from journal to canvas. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next week.